so good morning to all so i think uh, so all of you are live so try to inform all others your friends to come live so the, so we can start the revision class of basic thermal engineering so today structure and laws of thermodynamics so i just briefly explain you today about the system the what is the definition of system boundary surrounding working fluid and the state of a system thermodynamic systems that is types of system a open system closed system and isolated system with some examples properties of system intensive and extensive properties with examples definitions for properties like enthalpy entropy internal energy specific heat concentration specific heat constant volume and also in the next class we will go for the derivation of cp minus cv equals to r and also we go through the derivations of characteristic gas equation universal gas equation and also we discuss the quasi static process so in the same we'll discuss about the zeroth law first law and second law of thermodynamics so at the end we solve some important questions so which are important for your examination the end examination so this is what for the first class, first chapter okay now i will start with the definition of system i said what is a system as you know already discussed about the system in our classes a thermodynamic system is a definite space in a definite space in a space where some thermodynamic processes are taking place you know that one so in the system we have types of system we have open system closed system and isolated system so this is important question for your theory examination so the question will be uh, the nature of the question is define system and explain the types of system so as you already defined the system a definite area in a space where some thermodynamic processes are taking place you write like this the definition and the types of system open system closed system and isolated system so we define the open system as the system in which both mass and energy transfers is called open system and example for the system, open system is ic engine compressor steam turbine and also the definition for a closed system is the system in which only energy transfers but no mass transfers is called a closed system an example for the closed system is a piston cylinder a gas filled in a piston and cylinder arrangement a iron box a tube light where the only energy interacts no mass transfers is example for closed system and the isolated system the system in which no mass and no energy transfers is called isolated system a very good example for the isolated system is the universe and also you can have the thermoplast as a example for the isolated system and then one the next important question is the properties of a system so we define the properties uh, as the characteristics of the system so which indicates the condition of the system so in the properties we have three types of properties 
generally intensive properties extensive properties and specific properties for diploma students only the intensive and extensive properties are given for your syllabus the intensive properties are defined as the properties which are independent of mass of the system are called intensive properties example for the intensive properties are the temperature pressure specific volume density and the extensive properties are defined as the properties which are depends on the mass of the system are known as the extensive properties so all types of energy comes under extensive properties okay energy is a extensive property entropy is an example for the extensive properties mass is example for the extensive properties volume is example for the extensive properties okay the specific properties are not given for the diploma students so you can also define the specific properties so after the properties so we define one more important question that is definitions of properties like enthalpy entropy internal energy cp and cv so we define the enthalpy as a sum of internal energy and the product of pressure and volume the enthalpy is denoted by the symbol h therefore mathematically the enthalpy is given by h equals to u plus pv there where u is internal energy in a kilojoule pressure p is a pressure in newton per meter square v is volume in meter cube okay and then we define the entropy as a randomness of the system which increases with the addition of heat and decreases with the removal of heat mathematically the entropy is denoted by the symbol ds so ds equal to delta q divided by t capital t that capital t indicates the absolute temperature so are all you are also you can define the entropy as the ratio of the heat transfer to the absolute temperature the unit of entropy in entropy is denoted by the symbol capital s and the unit of entropy is kilojoule per kelvin then we define one more important property internal energy internal energy is defined as the energy contained within the body of the system is known as a internal energy so internal energy is denoted by the symbol capital u so its unit is kilojoule and then we define the specific properties are the specific heat the specific heat generally is defined as the amount of heat required to raise unit mass of a substance through 1 degree celsius this is general specific heat there are two types of specific heat so one is specific heat at a constant pressure another one is specific heat at constant volume so if you take a solid and a liquids they have only one type of specific properties specific heat but if you come to the gases it is having two types of specific properties so that is cp and cv for your syllabus for a diploma karnataka students so for your syllabus it is given the cp and cv the definition of cp and cv that is specific heat at constant pressure and a specific heat at constant volume the specific heat at constant pressure is defined as the amount of heat required to raise unit mass of a substance through 1 degree celsius at constant pressure its unit is kilojoule per kg kelvin and uh, the cv the specific heat at constant volume is defined as the amount of heat required to raise unit mass of a substance through 1 degree celsius at constant volume is known as specific heat at constant volume and these two definitions are very important for your uh, end examinations so you get a five mark question define specific heat at constant pressure and define specific heat at constant volume this is one more important question 
and then uh, we have a, a relationship between cp and cv that relation between, uh, we have a derivation for phi max derive the relationship between cp and cv or you can have the de uh, derivation derive cp minus cv equals to r you have one more the same question will be asked in a different ways so after that that derivation i will take in the next class so today i am only engaging the sum of the theory part of the first chapter okay the derivation tomorrow which are important derivation i will discuss in the next class so after cp and the cv so we have relationship between cp and cv and then we have a characteristic gas constant so after the cp minus cv equals to r we have a characteristic gas con equation that is pv equals to mrt that is a one more derivation so which we can derive in the next class so after that we have a universal gas constant which is denoted by r subscript u the universal gas constant is de uh, defined as the product of molecular mass and the gas constant so you know that molecular mass and the gas constant the gas constant is a characteristic gas constant which is different for a different gases the r value is not fixed for all the gases if the gases changes uh, if the element changes the r value changes for the different one and the ru value that is universal gas constant value will remain same irrespective of the gases and its value is 8.314 kilojoule per kg mole kelvin that value is fixed for all the gases and the ru is denoted, uh, def, uh, denoted mathematically mr therefore we can define the ru the universal gas constant as the product of molecular mass and the gas constant and then after the universal gas constant we can define the quasi static process so the quasi static process is asked for five marks so as, as i already discussed in the, the theory class since it is a revision class so i just define the quasi static process the process which is carried out very slowly so that end and initial initial and end states are also in equilibrium and also the intermediate states through the uh, during the process the system follows all are also in equilibrium states it means the process which, uh, the deviation of this process from the non equilibrium condition is very very negligible so therefore initial and end states are also in equilibrium and also the intermediate states are also in equilibrium that is what a quasi static process all the reversible processes are generally quasi static in nature it means the quasi static process is a reversible process but all the practical processes are irreversible processes and then uh, today in the same class we will define uh, some of the definitions like uh, zeroth law first law and second law before that i will define one more definition that is substance which carries the energy from one position to another position from one location to another location which carries the energy so if you take a steam engine or a steam turbines there the working fluid is a steam if you take the ic engines so petrol or a diesel the respective in engines that is a working fluid if you take the hydraulic turbines the water is a working fluid okay and then after the working fluid we will go for the zero law of thermodynamics so zero law of thermodynamics so you get a one five mark question like define zero law of thermodynamics and first law of thermodynamics or it will be combined with the first law of thermodynamics and second law of thermodynamics so we can define the zero law of thermodynamics as if the two systems are in a thermal equilibrium with each other with a third system separately 
so that is water if two systems are under thermal equilibrium with each other and also thermal equilibrium with a third system sub that is what the zero law of thermodynamics so you get a very important question for a competitive exams the zero law of thermodynamics you get a question on this the basic temperature measurement the temp the temperature measurement which law follows during the temperature measurement which law follows you get the options like zero law of thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics second law of thermodynamics and third law of thermodynamics that is entropy generation so in that you have to tick for the zero law of thermodynamics which is a basic for the measurement of temperature and then uh, we'll uh, define the next first law of thermodynamics the there are so many statements for the first law of thermodynamics the first law of thermodynamics generally is a, a law of conservation of energy so that is what energy neither be created nor be destroyed but it can be transferred from one form to another form that is what the first law of thermodynamics so for in our class we define the first law of thermodynamics as the cyclic integral of heat transfer is equals to cyclic integral of work transfer and also we define the first law of thermodynamics as the summation of heat transfer in a cycle in a cycle the summation of heat transfer is equals to the summation of work transfer that is what the first law of thermodynamics and then the second law of thermodynamics so there are two statements for the second law of thermodynamics so that is what the kelvin planck statement and the clausius statement the kelvin planck statement will give the idea about the engines and the clausius statement will give the idea about the refrigerator and heat pump so if you go for the kelvin planck statement it is impossible to construct an engine working in a cycle to transfer the heat from higher body temperature to lower body temperature without any without the two temperature reservoirs so it means in order to get the work from an engine we need two temperature reservoirs that is source and sink so that is what we define once again the second law of thermo the kelvin planck statement as it is impossible to construct an engine to produce work with a single temperature reservoir there it means there are two temperature reservoirs are needed and then similarly we define the clausius statement which is for the refrigerator and the heat pump if we go through the, the formula for the first law of thermodynamics that is sorry second law of thermodynamics uh, the kelvin planck statement the efficiency of that engine is denoted by 1 minus q2 divided by q1 so where q2 is the amount of heat rejected to the sink and the q1 is the amount of heat supplied from the source to the engine similarly if you take for the reversible engines we get some problems on the reversible engines so efficiency is equals to 1 minus t2 divided by t1 where t2 is the temperature in a kelvin of a sink t1 is a temperature of source in a kelvin and similarly if you go for the next the kelvin uh, clausius statement so the clausius statement will uh, deal for the refrigerator and heat pump so there the it is stated as so it is impossible to construct a device working in a cycle to transfer the heat from low body temperature to high body temperature without an external aid that is external aid is the work supply without any external work you cannot transfer the heat from for so definitely we need an external source that is in the form of work done for a refrigerator that is electrical supply is needed for the refrigerator and also for the heat pump if you take the refrigerator so like the efficiency of the engine is denoted by 
eta that is here also the efficiency of the refrigerator and heat pump is denoted by the coefficient of performance so which is uh, generally known as cop of the refrigerator and heat pump the cop of the refrigerator is the, is uh, mathematically given by q2 divided by q1 minus q2 where q2 is the desired effect so you have to concentrate on the desired effect so which is the desired effect in a uh, these two things that is a refrigerator and heat pump in a refrigerator the desired thing is to cool it to remove the heat that is your q2 and in case of uh, heat pump the desired effect is to heating that is supply the heat to the source that is q1 so with this manner matter mathematically we give the cop of refrigerator as q2 divided by q1 minus q2 for a, refer a reversible refrigerators t2 divided by t1 minus t2 and for the heat pump it is q1 q1 divided by q1 minus q2 for a, a reversible heat pump this will be t1 divided by t1 minus t2 okay then we will go for these two are very important so concentrate on more these laws zero law first law and second law thermodynamics which are very important for your final examination semester end examination and similarly we go for the next so that is what the study flow energy equation one more important question study flow energy equation s f e e so we have a, a derivation for the actually for the study flow energy equation for your syllabus for diploma student there is no derivation so you have only direct uh, equation so that equation i will deal with the next class and i before that i define you get the question like define study flow energy equation define study flow and mention the study flow energy equation and uh, mention each part each terms in the study flow energy equation so the study flow in a flow the in a flow the characteristics of the flow such as pressure velocity so which will not vary with the time and such uh, characteristics and such flow is known as a study flow in a flow in a flow the flow characteristics are not varying with the time then those are called the study flow and we have the study flow energy equation we will discuss in the next class okay with this i conclude my today class in the same way so once again for all four semester diploma mechanical engineering students so we are from the bldas sri sangan basava mahaswami ji polytechnic college again we will inform to all you, all the students for the next class of basic thermal engineering will be taken in the tomorrow so we also inform the time of the class so with this class i will conclude similarly we will continue with the next class of hydraulics so bs nikam sir will engage the class and the class of the the timing of the class will inform shortly through the post master mechanical engineering whatsapp group thank you